My name is Jeff. Um, I'm an intern at the University of Maryland, and uh, you're here for a seminar on how to study the Bible. So that's what we're going to do. So um, thank you guys for, for joining us this afternoon. Hopefully this can be helpful as you seek to study God's Word and try to figure out how to do that. And also, hopefully it can be a tool that can be transferable that you can also teach other people how to do as well. Um, this is a tool that has been particularly helpful for me in my own study of God's Word, and so hopefully it can be helpful for you. Um, the majority of our time, we're just going to spend time looking at one tool, and uh, the one tool is, it's called Observation Interpretation Application. So it, kind of, it sounds kind of complicated, but it's really not. Um, and we're just going to, uh, it won't be a lot of me talking, we're just, I'll kind of explain it, and then we'll just kind of do it, and um, you have the opportunity to ask questions if you want to, but we'll just kind of walk through it. Um, we're going to look at a passage uh, of Scripture in Luke 7. Um, and so on your table, there should be the passage, there should be the outline, and a scrap piece of paper. So you should have one of each because um, the, it's going to involve you um, writing down uh, different, different things on that piece of paper. So make sure you have a, a piece of notebook paper and a pen because um, you're going to do some writing as you look at the text. So... So before we get started, um, I'm just going to talk about kind of, kind of two assumptions that we take to studying the Bible. Um, and to the two, two assumptions that we take when we study the Bible are this, uh, that God's Word actually has authority in our lives. Um, so this might be obvious or it might not be obvious. Um, so when we read God's Word, we're not looking to just merely gain more knowledge, uh, but we're actually looking to, um, we're actually looking for God to actually speak to us uh, and to challenge us and to, to, um, to lead us into life uh, so that our lives might be changed and, and look more like His. And there's a passage in, in James where James says, don't just merely listen to the Word, but do what it says. And so uh, God's Word has authority in our lives is the first assumption. And there's a um, a verse in 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17, and it says, All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And our hope is that every time we open God's Word, hopefully we're taught, or we're rebuked, or we're corrected, or we're trained, because uh, God has authority in our lives. Um, and then the second assumption is that all of Scripture is about Jesus. And this is actually pretty important because as we look at Scripture, here's what we're not doing. What we're not doing is we're not looking for ways to be better. We're not looking for ways that I can modify my behavior so that I can be a better person. We're also not looking for just uh, abstract wisdom. Uh, we're not looking for, so it's not a self-improvement book. No, all of Scripture is about Jesus. And we're looking to how it ultimately points us to love and worship the person of Jesus Christ. Um, and so, in Luke 24, after Jesus' resurrection, he's talking with two men on the road to Emmaus, and he's having a conversation with them. And at one point in the conversation, um, he tells them that he is basically the Messiah. And then it says this, it says, "...in beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself." So the entire Old Testament is about Jesus. So Moses, the law, the prophets. Um, and so we're ultimately looking to how the scriptures point us to Jesus, ultimately. And if you have, we don't have time to like go into that fully, but if you have questions about that, maybe we can address them at the end. Um, so those are the two assumptions. God's word has authority in our lives, and ultimately all scripture is about Jesus. So um, before we get started into uh, studying this passage I'm just going to pray for us um, and just ask God to open up our eyes and to speak to us. So let's pray real quick. Father, this is your word, and we believe that you desire to speak to us through your word. And so we pray that you, right now, through your Holy Spirit, would speak to our hearts and our minds through your word. And we pray, God, that you would sanctify us in your truth and your word is truth. And so, Father, would you open up our eyes to see glorious things in your word. Amen. 
Okay, so here's just like a brief introduction to this tool, observation, interpretation, application. So it is kind of what it looks like. The first step you do is you just observe. So all you're looking for are just, just the facts, ma'am, right? You're, you're just looking for things that are just obvious, really. All you're doing is just observing facts. So this is sort of the water skiing phase. So if you've ever been water skiing, um, you're getting pulled along by a boat, but all you're really doing is you're kind of skimming along the surface. So you're just observing what's obvious. The second thing that you do uh, is interpretation. And interpretation is more kind of snorkeling. Snorkeling is you're getting a little bit under the surface. Um, you're able to see there's a little bit more depth. And so you're taking all the observations that you've made and you're, you're trying to understand what does this text mean. Um, and so, and then the third stage is application. Um, and that's scuba diving. And scuba diving is you, now you're going down deep. Now you're going down a lot deeper and you're actually saying, okay, now that I've observed what it says and I'm, I've interpreted its meaning, now what do I do? Like, how does this change my life? Like James says, we're not just merely supposed to, to listen to the word, but we're actually supposed to do what it says. And so, um, so we talk about application and how does it actually apply to our lives. Okay, so here's, well, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to give a brief preview to each step, and then we're actually going to do it uh, to our passage here in Luke 7. Do you guys have uh, sheets in the back? Okay. Um, would, could someone just come up here and just give like a couple of them? There's like a couple. Yeah, sweet. Thanks, man. That's perfect. Thanks, man. Okay. So the first step uh, is really observation. In all observation, the question that you're asking to, to, when you study the Bible is, what does it say? What does the text say? So here are some of the things that um, you're going to look for um, when, you're, when you're in the observation stage. You're looking at who. So who's the author of the book? Who's writing it? And these are, uh, they should be on your outline too, so you can take them home. Who's the book written to? Who's the author? Who's the audience? Who's being written about? Who's in the story? And then what? Uh, what's the genre? Uh, is it a letter? Is it history? Is it a gospel? Is it... And the reason this is important is because the way that you understand the meaning of the text depends upon the genre of the text you're in. The way that you interpret history is different from how you would interpret a letter. And then you're also looking at what is the historical cultural background of the text. So for example, if Paul is writing to a church in the New Testament, and maybe he's writing into some cultural issues, and it's helpful to know what are the, what's the cultural background. Uh, what's happening in the story? What's going on? This is another good one too. What words or phrases do you see repeated? And in our passage in Luke 7, uh, there's some things that are repeated that are really helpful to help us understand what's the meaning of the text. Another thing you're looking for is where. Where's the story happening? Kind of the scene. Where does the author, audience live? Basic stuff. When? When was the text written? Uh, when's the story taking place? Okay. Um, one of the reasons why it's really good to just hang out on the surface and hang out on observation um, is really this. It's because it's really easy to come in with our own assumptions about God's Word and to kind of bring in our assumptions about what we think the text says um, and kind of let that dictate what we get out of it. And I've found uh, the more that we spend, the more time we spend on observation and just simply observing what's on the surface, um, oftentimes that's when God really helps us see something that maybe I wouldn't have expected. Um, and he really is able to speak to us. And so, really, the, the more time that we spend on observation, uh, the more fruitful our interpretation and our application is going to be. So, so now we're in, we're, we've made our observations, and so now what we want to do is we want to ask the question, what does it mean? And uh, here are some, some questions that can help guide us into the meaning of the text, because, again, um, one error that we can make is we can bring our own assumptions and our own meaning to the text. Um, and so we don't want to do that. Uh, and so one question that is good to ask is, what does this text teach us about the nature and character of God? 
Uh, what can we learn about who God is and his nature from this text? And then another question you can ask is, what sinful, broken, or fallen condition is being addressed or corrected by the passage? So um, that's usually, it's usually, this is usually the most easy, the easiest uh, question to answer uh, because the Bible is just full of stories about sinful, broken people. But you're kind of looking for what is, what is the sinful or fallen condition that's being addressed? And then uh, another question is, is, what's the deeper sin behind the behavior? So if there's behavior going on, if, if people are behaving a certain way, uh, what is the deeper sin behind that? And then another question is, how do we see God's solution to our sin in this passage? Uh, what is true about this text? That What does God do in response to our sin? And then lastly, uh, in what way is Jesus the answer to the problem addressed in this text? And again, uh, the reason why this is so important is that when we approach the Bible, again, the Bible is not a moral code book that we're just supposed to follow its laws. We are supposed to follow his laws, but ultimately it's all, it's all about Jesus, and, and the Christian life is about responding to his grace. Paul says in Corinthians that we, are, we grow in our faith, that we are transformed by beholding the glory of Christ in the gospel. So the way that we make progress in the Christian life is actually by, by, by seeing how glorious Christ is, and that is the reality that transforms us. And so, ultimately, it's, it's worship of Jesus um, that really transform us, tra- transforms us. Um, and so, if you kind of leave with just a laundry list of things to do, um, that's not super helpful. What, what we need is a heart change, um, and the gospel in Christ is the one who can do that. So, these are some questions to ask um, whenever we're interpreting a text. All right. So here's application. Um, application is essentially asking a question, uh, okay, so now what do I do? Now how do I live in response to this text? Um, so two questions that you can ask is, um, how does this text cause me to worship Jesus? Um, and how does my life need to change in light of this truth? So we only have like a couple minutes or so, so just feel free to um, talk about that in your groups, uh, maybe dialogue. Um, maybe just for a couple minutes on on application so